Hi guys, this is Jimmy from Chaos Group and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a daylight setup in an interior scene. As you can see I have already opened my scene Interior Studio Max and this is the scene that I'll be working with. So let's take a look around. Uh, it's a very simple interior scene and uh, usually when I start setting up my lighting I'll have no materials in the scene so I'll always do the light setup before I have any materials. But uh, right now I have randomly placed some material in the scene and you can see them if I render out, they're very simple. Just because uh, I want to show you a very simple uh, but useful feature. So I'm going to open the render setup and in the global switches I'll go to override material. I'll enable it and I'll click on this none button and create a standard V-Ray material. Now, uh, the reason I did this is because I want to be able to render my whole scene with just a single gray material. This way, I can set up my lighting and I won't be uh, bothered with uh, any uh, hard to render material. So this way, my rendering will be much, much faster uh, than if I had all the materials in the scene. And uh, this will be very useful for you if you have already set up a scene, but then you want to change the lighting just a little bit or more. And you can use the override material there to uh, speed up the rendering. Okay, so as you saw, uh, when I rendered this out, uh, I was also using the V-Ray frame buffer. So I have enabled the frame buffer here. And uh, I only had the default lights. So the first thing I want to do is uh, add the illumination in the scene. And uh, as I told you, I want to create a daylight setup. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the lights, V-Ray, and create a V-Ray sun. I'm just going to drag it in the front view. And when I do this, uh, it will automatically ask me uh, if I want to create the V-Ray sky in the environment. Now, the V-Ray uh, sun and sky system is very useful because it actually allows me uh, to create daylight setup uh, very easily. It's a very bright light source. It has the same intensity of the real sun. And it also creates this procedural texture that is placed in the environment called the V-Ray sky. Now, when I rendered out the image, you can see that we have these very bright uh, spots in the windows and everything else is pretty, pretty dark. Now, the reason for this is that uh, I only have direct light right now and I don't have any light being bounced around in the scene. So, let me quickly fix that and I'm just going to go to a render setup, indirect illumination and I'm going to enable the GI. Now, uh, while I'm setting the lighting, what I want to do is uh, be able to render very quickly. So to do this, uh, I'm going to change the, the settings a little bit here. First of all, in an interior scene, I will always, always, always use light cache as a secondary engine. And the radiance map is obviously uh, my best choice for primary engine. So uh, before I continue, I'm just going to switch the irradiance map to a low preset, to, uh, preset and to check this checkbox that says uh, show calculation phase. And also, I'm going to lower the settings of the light cache a little bit. So I'm going to say something like 500 subdivs. And again, I'm going to check the show calculation phase. And when I hit render, you see that we'll have a very, very, very bright image. Now, the reason for this is, as I told you, is uh, that uh, the sun is a very bright light source. Uh, it has the intensity of the real sun in the real world. And what we need to do is actually uh, somehow adjust for the exposure. And there are several ways to do this. Um, one of the ways would be to play with the intensity multiplier of the sun. Another option would be uh, to go into my environment and to use the V-Ray exposure control. But uh, right now what I want to do is I want to create a V-Ray physical camera. And uh, I'm going to go to the Create tab, Cameras, switch to V-Ray and pick a V-Ray physical cam. Now, sort of a point of view like this, and uh, I'm going to switch it here. Now, uh, let me just adjust the position. Uh, I'm not striving to get the perfect position of the camera right now. Uh, what I want to do is just be able to see the important parts of my scene so that uh, uh, I can set up the lighting, and then for the sh final shot I can uh, readjust the settings of my physical camera. Uh, and let me just play a little bit with the focal length here, so I see more of the scene. Okay, I think this looks much better. And now when I render from the physical camera, you'll see that uh, the image will look uh, 
much darker. Actually, I have uh, it has been adjusted. Uh, the, the exposure has been adjusted, and uh, let's take a look at my settings of the physical camera. Now, uh, the physical camera, as you know, uh, completely mirrors a uh, normal uh, real-world camera, and the real-world camera has several ways of adjusting uh, the intensity of the image that it creates or the brightness of the image. And right now, uh, what I can see is that my uh, film is speed or the ISO of the film is too low for an interior scene. So let me just increase it to 400, for example, and once again I'll hit render. Now this uh, this makes the film more sensitive, and as you can see, we get more light into the scene. But as a whole, uh, I'd like to increase it a little bit more to maybe 600, and hit render again. And now uh, we'll get, of course, more light. You can see it even in the light cache. So. Uh, one thing uh, that I should do is disable this vignetting. I don't know. Uh, I can see it right here. I have these dark corners, and you'll see it in, better in a minute. But what is quite visible right now is that my whole scene is still very dark, and uh, I completely lost the blue colors here of the sky. So um, if I continue increasing the film speed and increasing the exposure, this will just stay white, and I don't. I won't be able to see the sky. So. Uh, what I can do is I can use some color mapping and uh, adjust for those things. I'm going to go to the render setup, color mapping, and uh, I'm going to switch from linear multiply to HSV exponential. And this is one of the color uh, mapping methods that I like. What it does is that it applies this exponential curve to all my colors and it brings them down so that no colors are over bright like these colors here, which have a too bright value. And uh, I'll hit render. And you'll be able to see that we get back the blue color of, this, uh, of the sky here. And now to get a little bit more light here, I'm going to enable the gamma uh, and to switch it to 2.2. So this will, as a whole, make my image a little bit brighter. And maybe now you can see that the corners are a little bit darker than everything else. This is because... Uh, Actually, the physical camera simulates this effect called vignetting, and in my case, I just want to turn it off so that I get uh, this image that doesn't have dark corners. Okay, uh, now the image looks much better, and uh, of course, we have some splotches, and they're quite visible here, but this is because I'm using uh, very low settings for the GI, and they're the preview settings, basically. So, um, what I can do here is... Um, play a little bit with the sun because uh, I immediately see that uh, I have these very very sharp edges here around uh, uh, the window light here and uh, this would, wouldn't usually happen uh, the sun would cast a little bit softer shadows so I'll select my sun and try to adjust those let me switch back to all and I'll pick my sun and the way I control the softness of the shadow of the sun is by using this uh, sun size uh, size multiplier so i'm going to put it to something like 10 and uh, i'm going to use the render region because i don't want to render the whole thing every time all over again and you can see that uh, we get these very very soft edges but this uh, is too much for me so i'm going to decrease it a little bit and try again and again this is too much so i'm just going to leave it to three i think it's going to be perfect and now I just have a little bit of softness that uh, just doesn't uh, show these sharp edges there that were there previously. Now, the next thing uh, that I can see is that uh, these chairs here and the table, they seem like they're floating in the air. And the reason for this is that they don't have good contact shadows. And once again, this is first of all caused because I have uh, very low GI settings. Uh, what I mean by this is that uh, all the shadows that would be cast here would be coming from the light that is coming through this uh, this window here and uh, if we take a look at the scene you see that I have another window behind which is shining light from this direction so and also some small windows here so all the shadows that this um, uh, chairs would cast are coming from the sky and it's pretty difficult for any rendering engine to create nice shadows from the environment so what I can do is I can use a nice functionality of V-Ray called the V-Ray Skylight Portal that will, I can actually show V-Ray where the windows are 
and where the light is coming and it will cast direct light from those directions. So how do we do this? I'm going to close this and uh, switch to front view. And in here, uh, maybe I should switch to back view, it's better because I want to see the two windows here. In here, I'm going to go to create lights and select the V-Ray plane light. Now the V-Ray plane light is a simple light source that uh, illuminates my scene, but uh, it has this checkbox that says skylight portal. And when I enable it, it stops adding light to the scene. So uh, I'll just drag one on the window and just make sure that uh, the light is behind the window. Just a second. Okay. I'm going to move my camera a little bit here and uh, adjust the position of the light. And what it does is it tells that V-Ray that here the, is the window and the light is coming from this window. So this light is not adding illumination to the scene, it's just helping V-Ray create better shadows and um, it's actually casting direct light with the same color and intensity as uh, the background behind it. So uh, I'm going to need to place one of the each light on all of these uh, windows and the way I'll do this is uh, by creating instances of those lights so that uh, I can control them just by controlling uh, one of the lights. And uh, because I have all those windows I don't want to waste time on this tutorial so I'm going to pause the recording for a second and then once I added the lights I will continue the recording. Okay, as you can see, I created all the lights and I uh, positioned them outside of the windows. Now, we don't have to be perfectly precise. As you can see, uh, I didn't align it perfectly. And I also used one light for the two windows. What you need to make sure is that uh, the light is outside the window and uh, that uh, it actually has this um, skylight portal enabled. Now, I'm going to go back to my... Uh, camera here and I'm going to hit render and now what we should see is uh, I, sh I should render the whole image of course uh, that we get much better shadows uh, and much better contrast shadows there where the chairs are now the image is a little bit noisier this is because uh, actually we're tracing now direct light and uh, the GI is not uh, smoothing things up but as you can see uh, we get much better shadows and now uh, for the final image I'm going to increase the settings and of the GI and of the anti-aliasing and you'll be able to see those shadows much much better. So uh, let's quickly do this. First I'm going to go to the radiance map and just switch it to a high preset. Then uh, I'm going to increase the subdivisions of the light cache and here in the um, V-Ray tab, I'm going to go to the anti-aliasing because I want to get rid of this noise here. So up till now I was using the adaptive subdivision because it was very fast uh, for creating uh, simple images. But uh, because I want to have a higher quality image now, I'm going to switch to adaptive DMC and uh, change the settings a little bit. So I'm going to say that I want a maximum subdivision of 10. And because I'm using this uh, checkbox that says use, use DMC sample threshold, I'm going to say go to the DMC sampler and decrease the noise threshold a little bit. So this as a whole will make uh, the rendering and the ray tracing much more precise and you'll see it in the final image. Now to make it better visible, I'm just going to increase uh, this uh, the resolution of the final image that I'm rendering and I'm going to hit render. And once again, I'm going to pause just for a couple of minutes until the rendering is complete. Okay, so this is our final rendering and uh, as you can see with the increased settings it looks much better. We don't get any splotches whatsoever. We have nice shadows here and we have nice contact shadows here from the chairs. As you can see it was pretty straightforward, very easy to do and it creates great images. And in the end if you apply some materials to this you can actually create uh, images that look like this. Now uh, this concludes this tutorial. Uh, I thank you for watching, I hope you liked it and uh, see you next time.